that you're choosing how to implement. Oh, one second. Right? I think, are we going live? Okay. All right, we're going live. We're going to do 15 seconds? Okay. okay. We'll do an intro about our cloud native shows, and then we'll jump into the conversation with you. Just so you know, like, we're going to do cool. something a little bit not related to this in the beginning, and then. Uh, I'll just sit here and do what you tell me. You sit there. And <laughs> <laughs> going live. We are live. We are live. All hey. right. Well, hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, everybody. Welcome to Los Angeles. <laughs> Welcome, thank you for being here, and uh, this is uh, the KubeCon wrap-up for today. That, I, Like in a conference, I don't even know what day it is anymore. Is it, <laughs> it's, it's Thursday, I I'm think. told it's Thursday. Okay, yeah. so this is Thursday the 14th, and yeah, this is real life. You're a bad authority, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you for, for joining us. My name is Leonardo Murillo, everybody calls me Leo. Uh, saludos a todos los que hablamos español. Uh, estoy aquí porque soy el host de Cloud Native Latinx, uh, and joining me is Bart. Yeah. What's up, everybody? My name is Bart Farrell. Very happy to be here. First time meeting Leo in person. We're going to talk about that sort of <laughs> first times. You know, we're doing all this kind of stuff. But also, big shout out to everybody who's watching this wherever they are. You are just as here as anybody. Um, so we want you to feel a part of this. Awesome to be here at KubeCon. I have the good fortune of sitting on this uh, stage right now with, with Leo and with, uh, with Randy. But I also have the very good fortune of, of hosting Art as Code, a um, cloud native TV program. We talk about the intersection between creative stuff, whether it could be sculpture, cooking, video games, music, um, anything on that in that sort of area, and then also the tech side. And interestingly enough, these two wonderful humans that are on stage with me, both will be on the show, whether they like it or not at some point. <laughs> Randy to talk about music, Leo to talk about good mentality, good uh, meditation practices. So anyway, but we're not here to talk about that right now. All right. We may get to that later. We got to talk about some other stuff. We, we want to talk, and kind of like I, I want you to introduce yourself. So there is, we want to talk about a new certification that has come out that's called the uh, Kubernetes Certified Associate. Is it correct? All right. Or so Kubernetes Cloud Native Associate. Okay. okay. Yeah, so Say it 10 times faster. That's, that's right. It's right. the first <laughs> question of the certification. If you can remember that, you're halfway there. Yeah. So uh, please uh, uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit of, as, as to what this certification is all about. Sure. So my name is Randy Abernathy, and I am a Cloud Native Ambassador and um, big, big fan of the CNCF and all of the stuff that's going on there. Um, we've been involved in the training efforts um, pretty much from the beginning and developing all the tests and stuff like that with the community, obviously. We're just a one, one small piece of the machinery. But um, watching the CKA and then the CKD and then the CK version 2 and there's a CKS and now this associate level um, kind of exam rollout, it's really kind of an interesting lightning rod for generating, you know, a, a focus on gathering specific knowledge um, about the cloud native environment and the space and, you know, the, the types of um, concepts that are important in cloud native. And at the end of the day, it, it's the first one of these that isn't a real hands on, mm -hmm. you know, kind of mm -hmm. practical type of, uh, you know, um, test. It's, it's just multiple choice. But it's, um, you know, I don't want to um, belittle it either because it, it requires you to understand or, or at least be familiar with a lot of stuff that's, you know, going on in cloud native. Mm -hmm. And so it would be really perfect for anybody who's not a developer or not, a, you know, an administrator, but somebody who's maybe a, an evangelist or mm -hmm. in the marketing, Look you know. Look no further. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, so, um, let's, so yeah, let's sign up, we'll, yeah. We'll be talking. Yeah. No, but just to get a little bit more context, Randy, can you just tell us, okay, is this the first time you've written an exam? What's your background in, in, in training and stuff like that? Mm, great, so, um, so I work at a small shop called RxM, and we're um, a cloud native, totally cloud native focused training shop. And so we have um, curriculum that runs the gamut from, you know, Kubernetes operator development all the way to just the absolute basics and then breadth that goes from Kafka to, you know, uh, Druid and, you know, everything in the middle. So we're really all in that cloud native space. Things that are cloud native are what people look to us for. And then, you know, when it comes to developing certification, we were talking, you know, before we went live, um, I'm personally not always a big fan of certification. Um, I think that it can um, channel, you know, people a little bit too much where the creativity, you know, pieces of it that, that you hold so dear are, you know, maybe squashed a little bit and, it, and it, it, it makes people think that this prescriptive solution is the only way to go. But I think 
that there's a bunch of things that the CNCF and the Linux Foundation have done to mitigate um, the, the the negatives and really beef up the positives. Mm -hmm. And you know, for all of the, and we were kind of laughing because I was saying one of the big things is that it's a very practical exam if you're talking about the CKA, the CKD, or the CKS because it's hands-on. You have to do these things. If you pass that test, you can do these things, and that's really really valuable. And we were also kind of talking about the the fact that since Kubernetes is you know, the, the, the basis of all of this cloud native stuff, and we kind of as a community agreed to build everything around that, then, you know, having a, a, a basic level of, you know, CKA kind of, you know, administrator knowledge is, is a pretty reasonable thing to set out. And I think because, you know, a lot of the HR people, they don't have any ability to, to, to know whether the, the folks they're interviewing are actually qualified you know, at any level, and you know, a lot of companies are adopting, and they're 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 looking for help. Like, how how do I know that I'm hiring five people who can actually administer Kubernetes? And while the CKA is an entry level, you know, kind of, you know, um, uh, sort of effort, um, it's better than zip, right? I mean, you you know that these people have actually studied hard, taken this test and passed it, and they understand the basics, and they, they're they're a platform that you can build on, and. So I think that while the um, you know the associate exam is is in fact multiple choice, it, you know by the same token it it it's going to be challenging for people because it, it covers a you know this cloud native space and I don't know if you've looked at the you know the the latest cloud native you know <laughs> map of uh, yeah, of projects yeah. yeah the landscape thing is a uh, is an eye chart at this point and it's it's an awesome I th I love the landscape you know everybody loves to to beat it up because it's got so much stuff on it but. It's an amazing tool, right? Databases have lots of things in them. It's a database, and it's a really useful one. It's interesting, because I think th there is a huge uh, talent problem in the industry. Like, I, every time that huge. I talk to executives and organizations, they're all struggling to to find talent across kind of like this, this limited pool, right? I think this type of, of tool, like this new certification, also enables <laughs> access to new people to the ecosystem, because if you think about CKA and CKA, and even CKS, right? I think the barrier of entry is huge. You have to be already a practitioner, right? Yeah. But this type of, of exam works for anybody that is looking to get started, and I think it got, it's going to promote the growth of kind of like the total pool of, of candidates, of talent that is going to be available to, I, yeah. to organizations, I, I right? In terms of, di when we talk about diversity, inclusion, outreach, getting more young people involved, all those things, and also, once again, as, as you rightfully mentioned, like, for folks that are uh, perhaps on the non-technical side, you know, like yeah. that, because it's, no, I'm not going to lie, as someone who is on the non-technical side, it's absolutely, in my case, terrifying of thinking, I'm going to get called out for not mm -hmm. being, you know, um, a high-level practitioner. And so I think we're going to see the dissipation of some of the imposter syndrome that, that a lot of folks mm -hmm. have suffered from. Yeah. And uh, encouraging other people to participate even more in the CNCF, I'm a big proponent of that, is like, you do not have to be a super mega expert to get involved in the CNCF. What you have to be is a nice person who's willing to learn. Like, that's, yeah. like, I think that's, Isn't that awesome? I yeah, mean, that that's what's awesome. so cool about and, the CNCF and, and, and this whole community. And, and if people don't, under, don't understand that fully, please reach out and I would be more than happy to jump on a call and talk about it because I really, really do believe that and, and I want everybody to be able to experience that in any way, shape, or form. Now, a little bit more on the concrete side regarding the exam. How many questions are we talking about? Preparation time? What, what, what do we got on that? Well, um, I, I think the, there's a lot of um, early data. There's a beta exam that's running right now. So we're, you know, kind of not fully baked yet. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the beta is going to run and, you know, there's, I think they're going to have 400 people take it. And then they're going to look at the results and then, you know, we'll get the final, you know, cake at the end of the, mm -hmm. the baking. Um, but, you know, probably in the, you know, handle of, I, I think, a, Somewhere around 50, uh, you know. I'm, I I shouldn't That's I okay, shouldn't no, make any no, statements there. Yeah, yeah, you know, some, something like that, and you know, maybe in the in the handle of uh, an hour or something like that. Um, okay. yeah. Can can people sign up for the beta uh, at this point? Or how, so how, so how yeah, they're they're. I don't know uh, if it's offered to everybody out there. If, you know, just specific you know individuals who are going to provide lots of feedback. But yeah, there was 400 um, you know slots, okay. and those are you know those are being filled. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll 
I'm sorry I didn't come as prepared with uh, with the data as I could have. But um, forgive you, Randy. Yeah, we can maybe follow up in in uh, in some notes on the in the online side of things. But um, but yeah, the idea would be that um, those people taking that that first round because the, the I don't know if you know this, but it, the first CKA was four hours. Four and it was hours, crushing right? yeah. <laughs> four yeah. hours. And there weren't a lot of us that took the four hour version. Um, most of them are dead now. And <laughs> then there was a, a three hour version, you know, and now we're down to like two hours. And it's because the psychometricians um, have really boiled it down to the point where they've said, hey, you know, you look at what you're going to extract about the person's capacity. To, to have mastery in this subject in two hours, and then what incremental extra value you're going to add to that precision in the third hour, and it's, it's more or less meaningless. You know, it's, it's not worth the suffering involved. And so we're just going to keep it at two hours. And okay. so that's, that sort of was the rethinking that went into the CKAV2. And, um, and so that, you know, it's a, it's a work in progress, and they're always looking for feedback. And the the, the robustness that the Linux Foundation applies to building these things, having been inside each one of them, is pretty impressive. And, you know, Clyde over there and, and that, that whole crew is just really top-notch professionals. And they bring in outside consultants to help with the, the whole process. So it's really robust. And the, the feedback in the beta is a really important part of the cycle because, you know, we want to just torture the general public. You know, we want to, you know, get it, get it nailed down. And it will evolve over time even after that because, you know, people take the test and they run into something that they find, you know, maybe misleading and, you know, they thought that, you know, they, they, they knew what the right answer was. The question just didn't strike them correctly. And, you know, so refinements like that take place over time, you know. Is there a timeline for it to get out of beta and kind of reach general availability? They, they, I believe they said by the end of the year. By the end of the I year? keep looking at okay. Mark to see if he can help me out. But, yeah. <laughs> soon and no very, love, soon, no and love very coming soon. back. Yeah. Soon and very soon. We can agree on that. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah. So in that regard, there will be sort of like the first, uh, we can say, crop of folks that are going to be doing this, building up to the next KubeCon. And so that's yeah. exciting to see by May you know, of 2022, and hopefully we'll all be together in Spain. Yeah. Um, yes. That, um, that will be exciting, but, but on top of it, to see you know, the results from that. And going back to what you were saying, too, is that you know, from, from the HR perspective, the talent perspective, both for people that want to get into the space as well as for you know, organizations that are looking for new people, I think having this is, is quite a godsend. Because it's like, at least we know, you know on some level that you've taken the time to do this, you've shown interest, you don't just have the word Kubernetes written 15 times in your LinkedIn profile. Um, these kind of things are very, very healthy. And because Kubernetes moves at such a fast speed, it's normal that you know, we would have all loved to have this probably several years ago, but we got it now. And I think this is gonna establish um, a really good pathway as well too for organizations that want to get more folks to be really Kubernetes native to understand it. And also to get that path to the CKA, it's like, well, you start out here, or CKA, CKD, CKS. Um, I think that's that's a really nice thing to see. Another question, uh, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but will there is there are there any plans to other kind of certifications that might be coming out in the Kubernetes ecosystem, either more advanced or more beginner or more niche? You know, there's, there, it's a community, right? So the community drives this. People come up with ideas for, hey, like, for example, um, I, I, I believe I'm the person who suggested to Dan Kahn that we should have a CKA. And um, I think he gave me credit for that one time. And so um, that, you know, it was just somebody saying, hey, this would be really cool. And then the CNCF taking action. And so that has happened with the security stuff. So I think anytime you find a you know, sort of concise enough domain of knowledge where, um, you know, a, a certification could be a benefit to the community. Because I, th I think in the mind of the CNCF and the community itself, we're, we're always looking to do things that add value back to the mm -hmm. community. And that's where this, you know, sort of thing came from. There's the, you know, the business value group that's meeting to, oh, yeah. yeah, to talk about, you know, how, how can we make sure that the CNCF is, creating value for the the members um, but also the users you know the users have their group and yeah this is such a good point because and I'm glad that you touched on that because this came out in the last KubeCon was that uh, you know the CNCF glossary and because mm -hmm. a lot of times it's like okay this is an international thing right. and nope. tied directly to this exam right That's yeah it. Nobody wants to feel stupid. <laughs> so, um, so having a starting point, whether you're a CIO, whether you're a junior developer, having those that starting point and building blocks gives you a framework um, so that you can feel that you're making progress and, and getting ahead. So that, and also whether it's vendors or end users, et cetera, having these go-to places 
to get more comfortable because a lot of the common responses around Kubernetes is that it's overwhelming, it's overwhelming, it's overwhelming. Two things to that. These resources are making it simpler. But the other thing that we were saying about you know, things that can't necessarily be tested by an exam, or the other part that I think is really important about Kubernetes that somebody told me a long time ago, Kubernetes should not just be a technical problem, it's a people problem. So get in the community. The best way to get involved is to get involved. Um, and I wanted to lean it over a little bit to you, Leo, because you were mentioning about you know, other topics like GitOps that might be a little bit harder to quantify to get inside these kinds of frameworks. You were mentioning something earlier before we started with Randy about that? Uh, well, I was talking about the work, so uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about community, right? Yeah. Because I think the, the as, as you were putting it, right, like all these different initiatives are driven by the interest of the community, right? So there, there, there is a structure that allows anybody to feed back into the CNCF and to feed back their experience, right, as to what is meaningful to them as individuals, as professionals, right, and to them as members of, of an, an industry, right? So uh, I think what we're talking about was the working group, how uh, people can participate in the working group um, and, and provide their feedback and their input. And matter of fact is... As, well as, as well as surveys. Uh, for, for instance, yeah. so there's uh, one of the things I wanted to talk to everybody is tomorrow, uh, there is going to be a deep dive of the SIG contributor experience. And uh, so there's special interest groups, right? Like I'm pretty sure uh, most of you know. Uh, this one is about contributor experience, how to contribute to the CNCF and to the community. So tomorrow at 2.30, there's going to be a talk uh, where you can understand better how to contribute to the community. I think that's very valuable. And it's, you, you, you will find out how to, how to participate in working groups, how to provide feedback that can be channeled into all these types of initiatives that I think are, are very relevant, right? Um, and there's also going to be a, a, an, an Ask Me Anything, an AMA, yep. with Priyanka, the uh, CNCF GM, that I also encourage people to to join in. Absolutely. And, and yeah. two points on that, like I was fortunate enough earlier today to participate in a panel about non-code contributions. And just so everybody knows, like not, you know, we have these certifications, these training pathways. The CNCF also has ambassadors so that you have uh, folks that can guide you, that can get you involved. If I don't have the answer, somebody else will. Like we all work together, we collaborate. There's a really, really strong spirit of community there. Another thing that's going to be going on tomorrow, just so everybody knows, mentoring, right? The mm -hmm. mentoring sessions. Super, super fun. I've participated both as a mentor and as a mentee. It's incredible, all right? Really, really rapid fire uh, networking sessions where you're going to meet a lot of people, you get your questions addressed. And because they're short sessions, don't worry if you don't get to everything. You can reach out on Slack, hit somebody up next week, you can continue the conversation. So really use all those resources at your disposal. And like you said, the CNCF wants to know your opinion. Right. You, you are going to be heard. Get those surveys in, get in a working group, jump into Slack, reach out and talk to people. So a survey, uh, there is a survey, uh, there's a cloud native survey that, uh, we really want everybody to participate. If you go to if you Absolutely. go to cncf.io, yep. uh, we really want to hear from you, and we really want to know how you're using cloud native, how you're using Kubernetes. So please go to cncf.io, look for the cloud native survey, and fill it up. We really want to hear your opinion, right? So that's super important. And what you were talking about, right? I think community is so important, right? Uh, we were looking. So one of the asks of us that are kind of like, uh, contributing with this show is talk about the highlights of the day. It's impossible. There's so much f <laughs> fantastic stuff. Like it's impossible yeah. to pick something. And, and we were just talking about it. What is a mechanism? How can people actually kind of be aware of everything that's going on? And the answer is uh, through people, right? Through a community, right? Reach out to others, talk to people, and reach out to us because uh, nobody knows everything. I mean, Leo, you, you just hit the nail on the head because when, when Bart was talking about the mentoring and all that sort of stuff and, and, and you know, how do I get started? I, it, it is a massive space, right? And there's n nobody knows everything, right? There's 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 just clumps of knowledge all over the place that are highly valuable. But there's a community here, and you can talk to people, and you can interact with folks, and you can you know um, you can you can get six months of hard research from a five minute discussion with somebody who knows what they're talking about, you know, in a specific area. And those people are here to talk to you, you know, and you can ask them questions in, in virtually and in person, you know. That's and, it. And that's, that's really important because uh, Bud and I were talking about the hybrid model, right? How I, I it's funny because I went into a talk today. I didn't really pay attention whether it's in person or not. And I walk in and there is not a person <laughs> uh, in front and there's just a screen. And I'm like, it's so amazing that 
and I think it's done. It's been done really well, right? I do too. To merge those two realities, right? Yeah. The, the, and and to really provide. I mean, this is this is part of it, right? Yep. Like, there's people right now, live looking at us yep. uh, here in, in LA, and we were talking about how it's so important that the community is opening up to this kind of global landscape, right? Yeah. Like and and global, not just in terms of geography, right? But also global in terms of how people feel about themselves. Do you, yeah. are, are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? Do you feel comfortable right. with other people or not? And how it's just opening up and merging. Um, so take advantage of that. I think that's that's it, something that is very unique to to the community that, that we're building and to what the CNCF is. It's completely true. I, I, I've uh, moderated 12, or I'm going to be by the end of tomorrow, moderating 12 sessions. And the, um, the app is really actually pretty cool. You know, I, I, in the beginning of the ban pandemic, you know, a lot of these like virtual conference tools, you know, they were like crashing and burning and it was all <laughs> sorts awkward. of issues, you know. <laughs> but uh, I think they, you know, they really got it working because I've been able to very easily, you know, handle questions in the room and then also questions online. And, you know, people are asking a lot of questions online. And I love the fact that, that people can vote, right? Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, it makes my life easier. If there's 20 questions there, you know, I'm going to take the ones with the highest votes because those are the ones that most people are interested in. So it's self-selecting, yeah. right? I mean, you really can participate, right? You're controlling me. I just, <laughs> I just look at what you guys tell me you want to, you know, have asked. And we ask the, the folks those questions. Yeah. No, I, think, I think it's a great point. So, and once again, is because, like you said, we have introverts, we have extroverts, we have people with varying levels of, of language abilities, the people that speak different languages, which is also one of the beauties of this is that you, uh, you know, you can be connected to people from all over the world, and that is one of the most amazing things that the CNCF provides is the opportunity to learn to break down your own culture, question your own ideas, interact with people from other places that teach you how they solve problems and how they approach this kind of stuff. Um, I think that KubeCon, whether it's in person or online, take advantage of that. Yeah. And, and I love how it's growing, right? Because oh. uh, so there's a lot of, so I, I, I do the, the Spanish show, like Cloud Native Latin X, yeah. right? And, and it's all about Spanish and kind of like providing access to people that don't necessarily speak English to be able to participate in the community. Yep. There's KCD, uh, China, Kubernetes community, China coming. Yep. There was KCD Salvador. KCD Guatemala. Guatemala, in yeah. so yeah. yes, representing Latin America. So I, I, I love to see how it's it's expanding and it's growing to a point where it's cross geography, cross culture. Yeah. And it, if English isn't your first language, you can slow Bart down to half speed so you can actually. <laughs> can <you>? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't aware of that. Online, man, yeah, take it. I, <laughs> <laughs> Subtitles and everything. <laughs> no, it's true, but I think, and I think it's also, we were talking about this before we got started, was, you know, resilience realized. Like, that is really a good slogan. And at first, you know, you just see it on the outside of the convention center and online, but then you're here and you're like, okay, the, whoever coined that did a great job, so shout out to whoever did yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because I think they really got it. No, and I think shout out to the CNCF, because we were talking as to how this was a big gamble. I, this is the first event that is in person from the industry. I think this is, uh, I think so. I, I don't know. Really? Of, wow. Of any other. And I think it was a, a huge gamble. I, I don't, uh, at this scale, I don't think, I don't think there has yep. been uh, kind of like others that have attempted to re kind of invigorate and, and redo this live experience. Yeah. And uh, they went all in. And I think it talks a lot to the experience of the CNC, the, the kind of, the, the underlying ethos of the CNCF, right? Being the first one out, out there kind of trying things out, opening up to the community. So I think like to the CNCF, Priyanka, Bill, everybody, uh, awesome. Like it's, yeah. it's been a I, phenomenal work. I was in a GRPC talk and uh, <laughs> it, they were turning people away. Wow. wow. I never thought I was going to see that at this show, but you know. All right. so, and I think, I think that says a lot. Once again, slogan resilience realizes that this step needed to be taken. It's yeah. being taken, and, but it's being taken not at the expense of the folks who can't travel here. You know, like Europeans can't travel yeah. to the U.S. until November. Lots of other folks from other countries weren't able to come, but you're still a part of this. Yeah. All of you are still a part of this. I feel it. Like, your presence is, is, is just as active as anybody else's. Yeah. And I think it's, I think, uh, anyway, I, I completely agree. Huge shout out to CCF. Yeah. Awesome. Kubernetes awesome. is a resilient platform, but the community is 10 times more resilient. Oh, that's beautiful. That's, and that, and, that, yeah. and self-healing. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> and yeah. And yeah, it's distributed. And yeah. <laughs> I know. We, we, we yeah, are I know. pods. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've gone down a rabbit hole here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So uh, I think other stuff that we want to highlight. Uh, how, how are we doing time? I was, just, I was just checking. I yeah. think we're good. I think we're, we're good. good. All yeah, right. Yeah. So right after this show, uh, there's going to be an online happy hour with Priyanka. So stick around once we're done because there's, there's going to be. 
stuff going on. And I want to kind of change gears here a little bit and talk about mental health. Oh, yeah. Uh, and matter of fact, is I think there's, there's a good segue here because we were just talking to, to, to a good friend of, of mine, and he was talking to us about his son, how he's like this very social person, and how being able to have this type of experience again is reinvigorating, right? It, it provides yeah, health. Totally. Uh, Bart was on a, uh, what was it, a talk this morning yep. uh, on mental health. So tell us, what did you learn about mental health? At that yeah, time? well, I think uh, Julia Simon did a great job addressing this issue. And also it's funny because it was mentioned by uh, Bob Duffy in his, um, or sorry, maybe I can get his name wrong. The guy from Expedia, sorry, he gave a talk and he was talking about the importance uh, of listening when it comes to end users. And also in, in Julia's talk just made me reflect about how, uh, you know, there have been, many challenges uh, with COVID and many learnings. And, and one of them is knowing how, to, if, in order to be able to listen to others, I think you have to know how to listen to yourself, or mm -hmm. I certainly think they're complementary. And we've all been through, or I, would, I think it's fair to say that we've all been through difficult times. And, and, and also again, going back to the slogan of resilience, realized that acknowledging vulnerability, um, I think uh, is, is a part of the path to resilience, mm -hmm. uh, of understanding that you're going to have moments that are going to be rough and yeah. you need to have the emotional vocabulary to be able to get that stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of that is loaded with privilege um, mm. because uh, for financial reasons, for cultural reasons, for lots of different things. And I'll be the first one to admit it. It took me too long to realize uh, going into the pandemic or once the pandemic was in full swing that I probably need some therapy or I need to go back. Mm -hmm. And but it, it took long, but I finally did it. And I'm, I'm really glad that I did. And I encourage lots of other folks out there as well. That's also part of the CNCF. You have a space where you can talk to people about this stuff and people are here to support you. So I think um, specifically the point today was about burnout, but I think burnout can happen, it can happen in many ways. And you have to be conscious that it's something that's gonna, that is going to happen in your organization or could happen. So what are the red flags? What are the warning signs? How can I really, uh, generate a culture and it's up to each organization to decide how to do that we could probably talk about how that works in each one of our organizations but I think it's I'm glad I'm really grateful that that topic was present today and I have no doubt that it will continue to be present in future KubeCons and other conversations that we're having but I think that uh, if you're not having these conversations in your in your organization reach out to your talent culture people uh, you know directors leadership and get those conversations on the table. And, and I think that's really important because one thing that at least personally happens to me, uh, I usually don't realize burnout until it's too late. You know, like, and so those red flags maybe are not even visible uh, even to you yeah. until, until you're getting to a point where, where it's critical, yeah. right? But I think that's also uh, keeping kind of this uh, idea of community present, right? Um, as you engage in the community, as you... Because, I mean, Bart and I, for example, you and I, right, we, we, we met just basically out of, out of I don't Somebody even know. Somebody introduced us because Spanish I don't even thing? know. I think I it was Ariel Khatib, I think. I, uh, no, you Shout know what? Shout out to him, too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> is he, is, he's not here, is he's he? He's not here, unfortunately. Uh, he's okay. in New York. Well, he yeah. is here, <laughs> yeah, virtually. Yeah. All right. So you're here. <laughs> um, having, kind of establishing these relationships, right, and being able to, to, uh, to be empathetic to one another, right, yep. it allows yeah. us to be able to uh, kind of pick up on those on those cues, right, and promote that conversation to happen. Because a lot of the times, you don't even know you're, you're, you're struggling. You don't even know you're suffering, right? Yeah. But through communication, through interaction, giving space, giving uh, space. Yeah. Then, then it starts to come out, right? Uh, so that's uh, like a huge uh, value of, of the community. And, and I think it goes beyond professional, right? Like this, we, we are friends. We are kind of like... Uh, beyond just uh, colleagues working together. Completely agreed. And we had that actually come up in our co-located event that we did on Tuesday. One, uh, one of our speakers for extenuating circumstances had a family member that was being very badly affected by COVID and wasn't, and wasn't able to, uh, to give his talk at the end of the day. And obviously all of our love and support goes out there, but people just have to, this is still an ongoing thing. Like, yeah. you know, and whoever you have in front of you on a Zoom call, you have no idea of the conversation that they just had. Whether that is a, so true. Whether it's you in a pandemic or not. You never know like, you what somebody know. else yeah. is actually really going through. You and know, and you, they may not know what you're going through. So breathe, yeah. give that space, and know that that's going to be part and parcel of you know the, the rest of our lifetimes. Yep. Um, and so I think we're fortunate enough that we're able to have this conversation right here. So once again, like I, I really... Uh, I can't state this enough that I'm, I feel extraordinarily lucky because I'm a relatively like, newcomer in all this scene, but I've, I've been extremely welcomed, extremely well taken care of, um, have been meeting incredible people. So I encourage folks that are out there that 
might feel a little bit hesitant, you have a home here. You have people that, yep. that care about you, yep, that, absolutely. that support you, that don't want to see you suffer unnecessarily. Um, but going back to more specifically to the point about burnout, because, you know, we're talking about folks that do, you know, on-call shifts. Uh, and also, this is interesting about certification that somebody was talking about earlier today. Because of this sort of knowledge gap, if you have all the knowledge centered on, you know, one or two people in an organization, if they have to miss a day of work, you know, that's a huge threat. So when you can yep. democratize this and spread it out more and get more folks in there, then you can potentially reduce the risk of burnout. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I think, I think, and you know, there's, there's a quality that I think it's common to a lot of the people in the industry. I think we're all very passionate about what we do. Oh, yeah. And I think we're all very dedicated to what we do. Yeah. Right? Uh, so learning how to, how to manage that passion, right? How to, how to time yourself, right? And, and how to give yourself room is so important. Uh, and I think in, it kind of dialogue allows for you, for you to learn that, that from others, th right? That, that's so true, Leo, because I, I think so many people in this community are just givers. You know, yeah. they will give and give and give. They will, you, you ask them to do something, n they'll never say no, they'll just take it on. And I, th I think it, it's incumbent upon us, all of us, to, to, to realize that there's a, there's a point beyond which if you keep taking it on, it's going to, it, it's going to be a net negative, right? Not yeah. a net positive. And you need to ask for some space. You need to, you need to, you know, throw up the, the, the white flag, right? At some point and say, Hey guys, you know, I, I'm just, this is too much. I need, I, I, I need a break. I need, you know, and, and the, everybody's different too. You know, you, you've got some people who will, you know, be able to, uh, handle like crazy time shifts, you know, working different time zones or whatever. And then somebody else just can't do that. That's not their DNA, you know, and you have to, you have to treat everybody as an individual and yeah. understand, you know, how, how they fit, you know? Yeah. You know, the pandemic has taught me that because I'm so f for instance, for me, kind of given my character for me, the pandemic actually kind of opened up a space for kind of self awareness, kind of for insight. Uh, and I, I'm very comfortable. I think we, we, all, we all kind of like in the industry are very comfortable working from home and, uh, you know, like just being having our own space and, and being kind of autonomous. My wife, she is not that way at all, right? Like <laughs> yeah. she, she is about socializing. She's about fam kind of extended family. And it allowed me to see that, right? How everybody has different, uh, you know, like, capabilities of, of supporting specific uh, constraints and, and scenarios, right? Mm -hmm. and, and to be able to put yourself in, in those shoes and kind of like normalize the fact that uh, not everybody goes or kind of can manage the same level of intensity. Yeah. And that's fine, you know, and, and you should support and should understand. I think that's all the opportunity that came out of this struggle, right? Because we've yeah. all suffered in one, in one way or another, right? So... Uh, I think it's very valuable for, for everybody to be able to kind of like see the world or attempt to see the world from other people's eyes and, and accept and understand. And, and to me, at least, that's what I've learned through this whole uh, pandemic. And, and it's been a struggle because it's difficult right, yeah. to, to be able to empathize at that level with, with others. Do you guys think that there's like some f fundamental things, though, that just um, are just get degraded because of the the virtual environment or there, there's some things that you know you just like uh, yeah so here is a, a, a controversial opinion that I, I wonder what people think get because uh, <laughs> so I want like this uh, please be, be good with me like uh, I think and I don't know if I'm aging myself here because this might just be that I'm all kind of old school <laughs> uh, but I think there's certain aspects that uh, around leadership, around people skills, around even empathy, right? Uh, we were just talking about about how one of my colleagues, the only the, that I met through the pandemic, all he knew about me was about my white office and my bike helmet. <laughs> right. That's kind of like the whole yeah. perspective that he had on me, right? <laughs> Leo, uh, and, and that's that's the frame, Leo. That's. Um, but there's a lot more to me uh, than that. Not uh, much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I try to have some more. <laughs> there's a jacket as well. <laughs> but I think there's a lot about kind of human interaction, the mm. nuances in communication. Yeah. Um, 
that I actually think are very important for people to develop, uh, f for them to grow as humans mm -hmm. and also progress in their careers, yeah. right? I think you, you don't want to be, uh, I guess, like you have the option to progress your career in certain directions where the human component becomes a more relevant aspect of your yeah. uh, duties and your responsibilities and, the, and where you can influence, and right? it's so funny that we're talking about certifying knowledge because what kind of a certification is there for that? There, there is, there is and, and, and yeah. there isn't, but, we, but we all know that those skills are super important. They're super important, and and that's one thing that, p particularly for kind of people that are starting up in this industry, yeah. uh, I think is very important for them to hear from, I guess, older people in the industry. Right, those aspects are important, and I think we, it's not necessarily that we will not be able to get there, kind of on the digital realm. Yeah. But I do think that still nowadays, I I, have, I personally have found such joy in finally <laughs> being able to sit next to you, yeah, right? And so I'm I'm a Latino. I'm relatively short, and I ask myself, how much taller is everybody going to be around <laughs> me, right? Like, <laughs> you know, it's, th that was all so like enriching for me. So I do think that maybe we'll get there through technology. Uh, I don't know, but from my perspective, and I'm, I'm curious to know what you think, there, there is that human physical aspect yeah. that does provide a, a layer of, of value and awareness that, that we still haven't quite gotten virtually. Mm -hmm. What do you yeah. think? Well, like I, I have like just two very clear tactical examples. When I'm coding, I just headphones, music, mm -hmm. tune out the world and focus, right? And that's when I get the most done. And so it's great virtual, you know, isolation. I can just mute everything and just go. Um, but when I'm designing and architecting, I want to go in a room with the smartest people that I can get about this subject matter, and I want to use big muscles, and I want to draw on whiteboards, and I want to have a direct discussions. I want to watch facial expressions mm -hmm. as we think about different models and you know architectures and approaches and technologies and and. I really miss that, you know, yeah, just yeah. The, the discussions and the direct interaction and, you know, because it's, a, it's you know, they, there's these giant whiteboards you can get that you draw and somebody else sees it and it's, you know, it's and just you know, not the same. There's, there's a biological component to it. Like there's a yeah. lot of research that talks as to how you're engaging your hand, for example, to draw and uh, to it actually has a, an impact in how your brain stores and processes information. If right? you, so you draw a big picture of something, you'll remember it. You draw a small picture of something, you won't. Yeah. So it's 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 fascinating. So what do you think, Bart? I think I think it's good. Uh, I I definitely I mean I can I can do both. Um, but like having done an offsite yesterday with our team from the Data on Kubernetes community, people who have been working with intensely for the last, and we realize it's only been uh, you know as a team all of us together. I've been doing it for a year, but we've only been together as a team for five months. But it was the first time that all of us were physically in the same space, and and I absolutely loved it um, because I'm. Uh, you know, I'm a kind of person that likes to get up and sit down and move around. And obviously, yeah. if you're at your computer, yeah, I can take my computer with me, but it's just not the same. However, I do think that we've learned a ton about the power of asynchronous communication. Mm -hmm. And and particularly, I know you work with folks in different time zones. Oh, I yeah. know you do, too. Yeah. Um, so that's a blessing in order to be able to, you know, coordinate. And, and in my case as well, I'm in Spain. It's nine hours ahead of California. So... I've always kind of juggling, and then I also work with uh, some wonderful folks that are in India, so they're three and a half hours ahead of Spain, um, you know, 12 and a half hours ahead of California. So balancing those things out between the morning and the afternoon. I think that um, to say that it's one way or another, in my personal case, I would probably prefer to be, but like I said, I think I can, I think you can, I enjoy the best of both worlds, but I can't speak for anybody else, you know well, what I mean? But, yeah. but I think this is the whole, like where we started, hybrid. I think that's what we're learning mm -hmm. as, as, Based as a on society, your you know, yeah. like there's, everybody's unique and everybody's going to need a different like combination yeah. uh, to kind of get the most out of themselves, right? So, and so I think that's what, what we're building, right? What we're learning at this point. Yeah. So if we took a temperature, right, how many days a week? in the office with all the other people around you and how many days a week at home from your virtual environment, Bart? That's a super good question. And actually, because in, in a company that I was working at previously, like with uh, when, because uh, in Spain, they started letting folks go back to the office like relati relatively early. And so I think, you know, I would say maybe two days in, three days out. 
That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I have three kids. Uh. They should be out of the house. So I need to be out of the house yeah. all the time. <laughs> but yeah, you can't pet uh, seven. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I think, uh, like from my perspective, the, the question is, what what percent of your time do you want to be kind of like surrounded with people, and what percent of your time do you need to be kind of like, uh, by yourself and in silence? And what I really want is I want freedom to choose at all times because as you pointed yeah. out right like yeah. I, my my job is always juggling hands-on work from strategy from kind of client meetings and so there's all this this variety right i want to be able to have access to different environments where i can satisfy that on demand and i think that's from my perspective for organizations that are looking to reestablish office mm -hmm. offices or headquarters or kind of whatever they, they, they want to call it like actual in-person locations providing their teams with that availability of experience on demand to satisfy the different constraints of, of kind of like sensorial um, uh, influence that they want to have is ideal so uh, yeah i need to be out of the house but i, I probably would say uh, i would like to have more time to do hands-on work kind of like in isolation than I have, but just because of the nature of my role, that is a lot about kind of like talking to clients and, and yeah. kind of solving problems. So we can we can take care of Bart with Kubernetes Scheduler 1.0, but you're going to need some plugins. I'm, you know, I'm, I, I I'm a, I'm yeah, a sophisticated. I'm a simple, yeah, I'm a simple human. I'm a simple uh, human. Uh, no, I, I yeah. need. I'm, I'm like a cluster. I need all yeah. sorts of different CRDs to. <laughs> yeah, right. <find. laughs> I will say another thing though, and actually, I would say this particularly in the case of uh, with Leo because I don't remember when we started talking, but several months ago, and and I, I was telling this to somebody else the other day is that looking at this hybrid stuff and, and, you know, being inside somebody's house, you know, like in the past it would be like, okay, I'm doing a, you know, Skype for business or Zoom mm. or Slack call or whatever, but mm. it's always in, you know, the context of an office. Right. But being like inside someone's home. So I feel like I've kind of been to your house yeah. and personally yeah. as well too, is that I love it when you when your kids appear in the background, like, and, and, not, and not just in your <laughs> the case. The dog walks by. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a dog walks by, whatever, stuff like that. We were doing a live stream and someone had to leave to answer the door for an Amazon package that arrived. <laughs> I mean, like, you see a little bit of everything, but I really like that stuff. Yeah. And it's like, okay, we're all human and you might have nice clothes up here and then you're in your underwear again. <laughs> 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 until, the <laughs> until the Amazon delivery comes. Yeah. But uh, I really like that aspect. And so, I, but also, once again, that's me. I know for a lot of folks out there, it's been really hard. And so that's mm -hmm. why also we mentioned this in our non-code um, you know, contributor experience panel that we had is that if you want to be in a meeting and turn your camera off, fine by me. Yeah, that's your yeah. choice. I'm not going to I, – I, I like to see people, but if that makes you more comfortable, I'm not going to step on your toes yeah. or judge you or anything like that. So I think that – I'm hoping that all the stuff that we're going through, I certainly would say so in, in this community, because like I said, the CNCF, the people really take care of each other. And as you were mentioning earlier as well, that both of you, this pay, I, I personally had never heard the, the, the expression pay it forward until I got here. Like mm. oh. I, I had understood it in some ways, but, but two things, not only that, but it's something else that I mentioned in the panel was from talking to, to Hippie Hacker, shout out if you're watching, uh, <laughs> is a concept that he mentioned taking, uh, paying it forward even further, which is viral generosity. Mm. That the more, you know, outward I love that I term. Love That's it. so fantastic. It's so good. <laughs> is that like, if, viral because, generosity. because the thing is that, and I would say this, just in the context of knowing the two of you for different reasons, is that uh, I care about you and I yeah. care about you too. And if you have a problem, I want to be involved and I want to know and I want to know what I can do. Even if it's just saying, hey, I hope you're doing okay. Or if you want to call and talk or whatever, if I can give that to you, if that's what, if, and I, if I can give somebody some, some, something else, I mean, my bank account has limits. I'm happy to show you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I really, I really mean that. And I feel fortunate to be in a space where I share that belief with a lot of other people that are really committed to it. It's not just a saying, like we really do take yeah, that to yeah, heart. Yeah. Yeah. And and so, like I said, I think I'm hoping that the, the pandemic is is making us warmer people that are that are more accepting, that are less likely to to, to you know jump the gun if if something maybe rubs us the wrong way because we have no idea what somebody else might be going no. through. Um, so I'm I, I'm optimistic about that. Yeah, I agree. And I think what what it boils down to, and I think what we're all learning, and it's not just about kind of. Like patterns of, of, of work, you know, and, and kind of how you want to work, is freedom and diversity, right? Everybody is unique, and we should be open and accepting of that, and that is reflected in everything, from how people are best effective, how people like to work, uh, 
and freedom. Everybody should be free to choose yeah. what what best works for them. I, I want to do a, a quick time check. I think we're almost. Oh, you're gonna put in your plug for your book? Uh, <laughs> no, but what I am gonna <laughs> what I'm gonna plug is um, so I want to I want to repeat a few things. So everybody, uh, there's shout a, out to Bill. There, yeah, Bill is behind camera. So, uh, so uh, thank you, CNCF, for this. It's been a phenomenal experience. Uh, we're, I'm very glad. We're all very glad to be back. So awesome to yeah, be back. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. And for those that are not here physically, you are here. We so love you. Virtual <laughs> hug. Um, Priyanka's uh, hosting a happy hour right after this. So stay tuned. Um, follow CloudNative.tv. So. Part of the community and part of what we're doing for the community, by the community, is all these shows where we try and communicate and share with you what's happening in the industry. Uh, in my case, hablamos en español. Para todos los que quieran eh, unirse a la comunidad y no hablen inglés, hay oportunidades en español. Um, so please. Next, next CubeCon's in Spain, perfect opportunity. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so cloudnative.tv, follow um, and, and kind of keep tabs of what we're doing. Um, anything else you uh, well, I, well, I think well, I think two things with that is that with related to cloud native TV you'll see there is a wonderful program called where can I not see certs where certs certs, certs magic. magic certs uh, magic yeah. I think Randy you've got a date all right <laughs> um, but like I said cloud native TV is just one other way to get involved a huge shout out to pop for putting tons of work in yes, this go yes. forward but and we're just getting started that's the coolest thing is like yeah. this is still just getting started so this is a yet another way for you to be involved as a viewer as a guest as a potential host in the future you can pitch a show if you want um i went through that process so that's how i got oh. artist code on there um so that's like a really cool uh, yet another amazing thing that's coming out um randy anything else that we should be hearing from you or i i think i've disclosed everything disclosable <laughs> <laughs> Except the NFT that you're working on? No, no. We won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> this show is going to be available as an NFT. <laughs> all right, well, thanks everybody for watching. Thank you all for joining. Uh, it's been a phenomenal experience. And uh, watch tomorrow at the same time. Another wrap up. Thank you all. Much love, everybody. Take yeah. care.